I'm the sixth generation Flint Hills farmer and rancher. It it all started with my great 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 grandfather Gottfried John Nering, who came from Prussia and exercised a 120 acre claim along what is now known as the Nering branch of Mill Creek in Wabansee County. It was 1860, a year before Kansas became a state. Gottfried, along with his wife Anna and children Dorothy and Gotthelf, built a house along Nering Branch, and this was after 1860. And their oldest daughter, Louise, was my great grandmother. That's kind of where our story really begins. When uh, Sven Anderson and his two brothers, Manley and Oak, came from Sweden in 1868, and they also settled right there next to the Nerings, and the, mostly on the what's grassland now. They didn't get down on the good creek bottoms like the Nerings did, and it was a lot harder for them to make a go of it in the early years. Yeah, this is a plat map that goes back the blue is the Nerings homestead and my great great grandfather is the one down below here which is about a mile and a half or two south of his two brothers settled up there so that kind of shows right where where they started out okay starting out with the andersons sven was born in 1837 in scone sweden and he homesteaded in hesdale in 1867. he went back and came back with his uh, brothers oak and manley in 1868 and in 1870 he sent for his betrothed wife christina nelson of vernland sweden they met in Topeka, and I guess then they got married, and they walked from Topeka out to Hesdale and spent their honeymoon out on the prairie. They had five children, Selma, Andrew, which is my great-grandfather, Emil, Emma, and Edwin John. EJ, they called him, was the most prosperous in that family. And uh, he had a lot of cattle and expanded his properties and he was also on the mill creek township trustee and the halifax or hesdale school board and he also later became a wabansi county commissioner sven spent his entire married life on the same farm and died april 11 1907 having spending his whole married life on that same place Okay, the second generation, Andrew, was born in 1873 at Hesdale, and he had five children. There's a picture of my great-grandfather, Andrew. And his children were Robert, Oliver, which is my grandfather, Leona, Elmer, and Norman. Andrew was also a trustee of the Swedish Lutheran Church in Hesdale in 1926. Eventually, Andrew moved into town when he retired, but he also kept working for Wabansi County and also the state of Kansas Highway Department. He died in 1950. Okay, the third generation was my grandfather, Oliver. He was born in 1902 in the Nering Branch community, and he grew up on the family farm and spent all of his time helping on the farm, and he, he went to school till he was in the eighth grade and then after that he quit and just worked for neighbors and some of the other big farms around there eventually he found a job on the burns ranch down here in marion county in burns kansas and that's where he met my grandmother minnie weber she was the the daughter of the ranch foreman joseph weber and in 19 22 they got married in florence kansas and my grandpa said after they were married he moved back to alma and rented a farm and started farming back next to his family and he, he told me they took a box wagon and horses that 70 miles from burns back up to alma and then they started farming which turned out to be kind of a rough time in the 30s 
and they had th- uh, five kids also. My Aunt Mary, Lou, Don, Larry, and my dad, Stephen, was the youngest. The 30s were the real tough part for him. He said if it wasn't for their milk cow and chickens and a few hogs, they just wouldn't have hardly made it. They, he told me the crops of corn got about this high, and it just burned up and died. And his workhorses, he said they got pretty thin, and they even lost their foal The Mary had. It was just so poor. The grasshoppers ate up all their feed. But by 1940, he was starting to do a little better, and he bought a farm, which is three miles west of where we live today on the main branch of south branch of Mill Creek. And it was a little better ground, and they they did pretty well there. And my dad was also born in 1940, and it was also the old Wabansi County poor farm, and that was the first time the anybody outside the county owned that farm. They used to house old people and they'd still work when they could. And, and it turned out to be a real good investment for my family. And, and that was the first piece of land that really stayed in our family from then on. The others before then never got to hang on to their land. Okay, we'll go to the fourth generation, which is my dad. He, my dad was a real hard worker, and he loved the farm, and he milked cows and helped his folks a lot, and they also raised a lot of pigs at that time. And in 1962, he married my mom, Nancy Hubert, and in 63, he bought a farm of his own west of town, about two miles west of Alma. And it was an old stone house, and they tore the old porch off and build a new a new porch and a new kitchen and a bathroom on there and then they moved into that old place and started farming there and 63 also my older brother andrew was born that year and then in 65 i was born and my brother in 67 and my sister in 71 and up until this point in our farming the the Previous generations just seemed like they stayed on one little piece of land and were content or couldn't afford to get any bigger. But my dad was determined to build up a bigger spread and a bigger cow herd. And he re- worked really hard to get to that point, and he, he worked us boys really hard. We'd get up real early every morning and do chores at our place. And then in the summer, we always drove to our grandparents south of town, and then we did more chores there. And we always met in the kitchen, though, at mid-morning and had coffee and snacks and got to visit with our grandparents and my dad. And that was a real fun time. We got to talk about all the livestock and what we were going to do for the rest of the day. And, oh, also any other big events that were going on in the country. I guess my grandpa was the one that, that taught us boys how to fish and set bank lines and to trap and to hunt. My dad was always too busy working and never really did any of that with us, but my grandpa was really good at it. And we caught a lot of fish on Mill Creek with bank lines and had a lot of fun doing that. And also at that point, we were getting a pretty good sized cow herd then. And our biggest job was putting up hay in the summer. And I don't know, I guess I forgot about the slides, didn't I? Anyway, all we had to put up hay at that time was square bales, and I got the job of driving the tractor on the baler, and my dad rode the wagon, and Andrew and Nathan unloaded, and my grandpa pulled the wagons from the field with a pickup back to the hay shed, and it it worked pretty good, but I don't know how my dad stood that when it got hot. In, In 1980, it was a day just like today, and we were baling alfalfa across the creek at the poor farm and I was in the eighth grade that year and I remember it was so hot on the tractor I couldn't lean on the fender like I normally did and I had to hold my hand on one place on the steering wheel or it was so hot I couldn't touch it anywhere else but we got a full load of hay and we drove over to the edge of the field and hooked an empty wagon on the baler and my dad got off and crawled under the wagon so I crawled under there, get in the shade, and I said, boy, it's hot up there on that tractor. 
And he said, well, you can come here and cool off on this wagon anytime you want to. And I learned then I never complained the rest of the day because I sure didn't want to ride that wagon in that heat. And over time, my dad was able to buy the farm south of our grandparents' place where my brother Nathan lives today. And he also runs a cow herd since he's retired from the rural water district. And my dad also was able to buy four other pastures, about 1,200 acres in all. And he was also an ag advisor to Governor Joan Finney and drove to the Capitol every day for as long as she was in office. And then he also was a Wabansi County Commissioner like his uncle EJ was. But his real passion in his later years was cleaning up his pastures and all of his ground. And boy, he go out every morning early with a chainsaw and just cut down all the brush and trees and then he spent hours with a sprayer spraying the pastures for brush and thistles and cerisa and that's just he really liked to clean up his land and towards the end of his life he was doing that on our land too and i know different times he would come over and just take up an old stretch of fence cut all the trees down and roll up the fence and I didn't really want him to at the time because then I didn't have time to build the new fence, but it forced me to. And so I really appreciate all that work. We just get right in there and, and build new fence. Then if, if he wouldn't have done that, we just wouldn't have got things fixed up like we did. When they asked us to do this Prairie Talk, we were like, oh, yeah, that'd be good to get the history down and everything. And then when it come time to doing it, we're pretty busy and luckily had a rainy day last Sunday to start working on it. But we should have been practicing a little more and like to thank a cousin, Mark Fyden, for helping us with some maps and helps with photos and stuff. But as you probably will find out we're not public speakers, but we love what we do, and we're ble we've been very blessed by God on our operations. So thank you to the Pioneer Bluffs for their ranching heritage. We love visiting here, and we loved hearing other talks, so it just inspired us to do it. But we'll admit the last couple of days we've been going, uh, what were we thinking when we did that? But anyway, I'll kind of give you a, a, my background. When I married Matt, we got married in 1991. But my story began back in Stafford and Reno County, Kansas. I've always lived in Kansas, which I can't say for my family. I have a sister in Texas, and my folks retired there, and a brother in Colorado. But anyway, my folks were Edwin and Barbara Barr, and my maiden name for my mother was Slade. And I still have a cousin uh, McClure out of the Slade family that still farms in Stafford County. We ended up moving from Stafford County to a farm north of Sylvia when I was pretty little, and that's where I got my love for the country life and everything. We had horses, so we were riding horses and the garden and the fruit trees and all the fun things I thought at the farm, and then you grow up as an adult and think, oh man. <laughs> but anyway. After that, my dad had become a manager of the Zenith Co-op out in there. He'd just kind of supplementing farm income and stuff, worked at them, and worked his way up to manager. So that's when we moved off the farm into the, the co-op, had a home there in Zenith, little bitty town, so it wasn't any big metropolis. And then I um, went to school at Fairfield High School, and then a couple of years at Kansas State, and that's where I had a previous marriage, and in that marriage was born one son, Brad Holiday. In the first picture, we'll go back and kind of identify people maybe, and he's on that side. So when I met Matt, I was an office manager for a bridge contractor in Topeka. And when I got married, I had been involved in some women in construction groups and different things, and they were like, you're quitting your job and you're just going to be a farm wife? And I go, yeah, it's going to be great. And, you know, city people don't understand that, you know. So anyway, I've been blessed that I've made it back to the farm. 
And another benefit when I was with Brad and I couldn't, I was working, you know, with, with Mark, I was able to stay home while he was young and stuff and drug him around quite a bit with the farming and stuff like that. So as, as he does now with his kids and stuff, you know, riding tractors or whatever we're needing, whatever we're doing, that's where the kids are. So anyway. I know Matt would have been successful at whatever he did. He has a work ethic that's uh, pretty amazing. I'm blessed in that way. But I hopefully I've helped him to succeed in some ways by feeding him. Doing the book work, seems like with farming, you never realize, you know, some of that stuff. He's very good at what he does, but sometimes then you got to remember when and that, do some things. So try to do that and then help whenever needed. Recently, some of the help I had, I think Mark was busy bailing and stuff when we were going to sell our fall calves. So Matt and I, um, we bring our fall herds closer to home so the day of the sale we can just walk them a little way and grab the calves and go. And I guess we'll have pictures of that. Maybe we'll do the pictures later or something. We'll see. Um, and Ivy was with me that day. We were doing one of the pastures. and we got them and put them down on the brome and was missing about 10, 20 head. And when we went back up, we found 10. So oh, that's part of them. So that's good. And decided, well, you go look the east. There's a big draw and stuff. See if you see them down there, I'll go west. And then we'll kind of meet back in the middle and stuff. So anyway, needless to say, we didn't find them, but he found them later down where I sh they were on the fields and stuff, but we were sure glad it all worked out. But that's one unique thing about with it being where we are, that we don't have a lot of traffic and stuff. We can move them down the roads and stuff like that. So we do know we're lucky in that way. Um, doing the book work, my office, it's things have changed quite a bit over the years. Uh, I remember when we were first married, I did our books by hand. And Matt would probably prefer it that way this to this day, you know. But um, I gradually got a spreadsheet on the computer. It was easy for me to tally up income and expense and stuff like that. And then the last few years, I've got most everything on QuickBooks. And I try to just get the totals, and then we give them to the professionals to do our um, tax work and stuff like that. Um Another thing I do is keep spreadsheets for different things that we need on our breeding stock and bulls. And we don't buy very many um, cows. I know there's been time when we were expanding, we bought heifers and stuff where you got to keep track of and stuff. So also on the um, rent, we try to keep track. And I'm kind of old fashioned. I have a folder on each landlord and stuff to keep track in a sheet that when we started and stuff, sometimes you need to look back or, you know, something It's it's just kind of old fashioned. I'm sure I could be doing it on computer now, but anyway, um, so that things, and then we don't spray our crops ourselves. We hire, um, OJ with JB Pearl does that for us. So I keep some of that stuff on to keep track when we pay and different things on the different fields and stuff. It just helps to know the size. We work with the FSA and that office, and that's changed over the years. It used to be open five days in Elma, and as they had to cut back, we were fortunate they still kept one in Elma, but it's just one day a week on Wednesdays. And our banking, we've kept it local for quite a few years, and then when we started buying land and needing um, financing and stuff, different things, we, we'd worked with our locals, but then now we've gotten where we have both, but... We also work with Frontier Farm Credit. Um, we've just been very fortunate to have um, good people helping us in our operation that we couldn't do what we do if we didn't have others that are professional at helping us out. Even working in this presentation, my granddaughter, Bryn, had helped, showed me one time Google Docs and stuff, so that helped me to kind of get our outline and different things done for today that I had never done, and um, even the PowerPoint 
you know, hadn't really done that before. So I'm never too old to learn is our philosophy, I guess. So um, some other things I've done to supplement our income, I, we sold Hogemeyer seed and bigger tone mineral for several years. And then when Mark got older, I worked part-time at the library, and now I get to take my granddaughters to story time or different things that I was involved with there. And someone had mentioned they were from Onega, and the Elma Library is part of the Potawatomi Wabunsi Regional Library, and Onega, Eskridge, um, Elma, St. Mary's is all part of that um, regional library, so it's a thing we all like. Um... After that, I think Mark was in high school, I went to, to work at the extension office in Elma there for a couple of years in the office, and they have a lot of good programs that our family's involved with, the 4-H, and I know my mom way back had EHU and stuff like that that they did, so a lot of good programs. And the 4-H is something I did in Stafford County, but Mark and Matt have both done it here in Wabunsee County, and same club members, and been leaders and stuff like within that. Um, so as I said, I try to help where needed. Um, getting parts, pulling calves. One of our favorite time of the years is that, you know, when the new calves are coming, but once in a while they'll need help. And mostly night holding a flashlight is my expertise, you know, but Matt's pretty good. And taken care of and Mark too now so I don't have to do quite as much in there but we did I was thinking about um, our spring calves are born February when it's cold and stuff and we were um, had some cows I think on the finney down there and he went to check them at night which a lot of times we don't have to but for some reason we, he just happened to that night and the coyotes were dragging the calf away from its mom but he got it and brought it home, but it was one of the most frozen calves I've ever seen, you know, that, that can live, that lived anyway. It couldn't even suck, you know, it was just so frozen and everything. But we warmed it up with blow dryers and we get rub, um, rags and rub on them and things. So it had a success story. We were able to return it to its mother. Um, in the summertime, I helped with the... They put up a lot of round bales now. We do a few square bales, mainly for coaxing and stuff, but we have the big round bales, so I drive the truck around the fields for that when they're loading and unloading. Um, one thing I want to say that I've had to not do quite as much is the cooking because most of our operation is up where Mark and Hannah leaves, and Hannah's an excellent cook, so we sure appreciate when she's able to do meals for us and Get to see the grandkids, too, so that's always a plus. Um, one thing maybe might seem interesting, I didn't get any pictures of it, but there was a house on the place that uh, Matt got from his dad, and it just was too poor to fix up. So we ended up getting a Wardcraft home in Clay Center and have it moved in, which it's proved real well for us. It's efficient and stuff and not having to do repairs, we were able to spend more time working on the fence and corrals and stuff like that. And that was a picture I could show you maybe, if I can find it. If it was back. There it is. That was some of our corrals and Mark when he was little, so. Um, in the pasture that's north of our house, um, we ended up putting a dividing fence in and that's pretty nice because we can have two herds there now. And we developed, there was a spring in each one side, so we're able to do that when we develop that. Um, another thing we've added is our brand, the bar A on the right hip of our cattle. His dad, they did a U-notch in the ears. So that was, we still do that, plus we do the brand on the older calves. Um, just wanted to thank all our wonderful landlords that have worked with us and appreciate all of them. Thank them all. Currently, his brother Andrew lives out west on their home place, and our nephew Zach, Nathan's son, lives at the poor farm that his grandpa Ollie and Minnie had. 
And if anybody was starting out in ranching and think, what do I need to do to prepare myself for ranching? I was trying to think back of some of the things I did that helped me. And believe it or not, basketball was one. I really liked basketball. But when we're sorting cattle or pairing up cattle, you know, you do your little defense moves and stuff. So that was something that I really didn't think I'd ever get to do. I don't play much basketball now, but... Um, classes I've taken in high school, I took some business typing and office management, then home ec, and I think now it's fax, family and consumer. So um, those all were very good. And I'd worked at a Ben Franklin store and savings and loan and some banks. So it just gives you kind of, you can see where I'm at now. I'm very happy to be on the farm. We'll let Matt continue. Well, before I forget again, I want to introduce my son, Mark, and his wife, Hannah, and Bryn and Ivy. Our two oldest granddaughters are here today, and Hannah's friend, Maddie, that she's helped us out quite a bit around working cattle and doing things for the family, too. And my stepson, Brad Holiday, and, and his wife, Emily and Daphne, their daughter, and then we just had a new granddaughter three weeks ago. And this is a picture of us at the Little Lutheran Church at Lake Wabonsi, where we go quite a bit. Okay, now I'm going to start on the fifth generation, which is myself. And uh, I learned an awful lot around my folks and grandparents on my farm. But when I got in high school, I was lucky enough to have a really good ag teacher by the name of Larry Hubler, and he taught me a lot about shop work with using a welder and a cutting torch and fixing machinery that way. And also how to judge livestock. And we went to a lot of contests and were, I really enjoyed that part of it. And when I got out of high school, I moved out to the poor farm to live with my grandparents. And by that time, they were needing some help. And my, my grandpa lost both of his legs below the knee from diabetes and poor circulation, so I had to help get him in and out of bed different times of the night. And so it worked out good. I was right there to help them, plus to be right there to do the work, farm work. My Aunt Mary came over on weekends, and she was also a big help for us. She cleaned and did laundry and cooked, but she also went with me to feed cattle. She'd drive the truck when I fed the bales off the back, and then she even used a corn knife and helped walk our milo and bean fields. Her and I would go out and cut the cane and pig weeds out of the fields, and even later on, she did that clear up till she was in her 80s, and she really got mad at me when I went to round up ready crops, because then she didn't have that to do anymore. <laughs> I can't believe she enjoyed that that much. <laughs> but anyway, after... High school, my two brothers went to work off the farm, so then I had a lot more work to do. Then I continued helping my dad and growing our cow herd. And then, like Julie said, in 89, I got married, and we moved over to Nearing Branch, where we live today. And then that's when her and I really took off on our own operation. And I kind of quit working with my dad at that time. And he didn't want to spend any money on equipment or buying really good bulls, and he knew I did, so we just kind of went our separate ways at that point. And do you have a bull picture? Yeah, this is a picture of one of the first bulls that I bought. Um, with the first one we ever purchased was from the Rock Hill Ranch at, in uh, P Paul and Nancy Miller, south of Alma, and they were very helpful to us, and they found a pasture for us to rent also a pretty good size one south of Walmigo. And they also told us about her dad, George Crenshaw, that had some really good Angus bulls, and we purchased quite a few of them over the years. And he also was took an interest in Mark during 4-H, and he'd come to the fair and, and uh, watch Mark show our home-raised cattle because they were out of the bulls that he had sold us. And... Uh, also, Mark was born in 92, and then when he got old enough to help, he started helping me chore quite a bit. And his first tractor job was raking hay and harrowing cow pies down on the brome and alfalfa in the spring of the year. 
And then later on, he could drive the field cultivator and tractor ahead of me when I was planting our crops. And we gradually rented more ground right along pasture and farm ground. And in 2004, we bought a 765-acre farm east of us on Naring Branch, and that's where Mark and Hannah live today. It had some really good farm ground along the creek, and we planted alfalfa in it the first year we bought it. Yeah, that's that's our land that we own today up there, and and the right in the middle of it is the Naring place. And Julie and I just were able to buy it three years ago. And then those tracks up there, well, we actually own part of what my great great uncles settled on clear back in the very beginning. And we feel so we didn't really set out to do all that. We just wanted to expand our operation so we could run a big cow herd, but we ended up getting a lot of the land back that our forefathers settled on in the very start of, of our being there in Mill Creek Township. In 1998, we bought a half section of grassland west of Alma. I guess I said that already, didn't I? And in 2011, we sold that half section and did a 1031 exchange to buy 610 acres next to that 765 acres, which is Mark's place now. And in 2014, we bought the old Bandle place. It was a 100-acre farm that joined our home place. It was timber and brome and creek, and it really made a nice place to winter cows and to raise more corn and alfalfa for feed. And also in our earlier part of this career, we had a lot of help from friends. Ron Mikey helped me. He sold me a six row planter and a two ton truck to haul grain with. And then later on, I'm gonna go to the hay shed. We had a hay shed fire and lost a hay shed. Well, a friend of mine, Bill Hoffenstein, found a big pile of 60-foot trusses at Silver Lake. So my brother Nathan and I went over there and we looked at them and we bought the whole pile for $35 a truss. And the next year, Mark and I and a neighbor, Greg Capone, went to work and, we, and my brother Nathan and we built a 60 by 100-foot hay shed there. We can stack the bales. 10 wide and four high. And then the next spring we had enough material. We built another 60 by 100 up at Mark's place. And when we set the trusses and put the 10 on these big buildings, we also had a bunch of friends come out and it made short work of, of doing those jobs too. The Dwayne Erickson and his brothers d helped us a lot too in the earlier years repairing equipment and when we sold calves then we had them scattered out in rented pastures and they'd come with little horse trailers we'd grab one bunch and send them to the sale barn while we'd go to the next pasture and catch them and when they got back we'd load them up again and it was kind of a lot of fun and those buddies they really enjoyed helping us do that too in 2013 mark and hannah moved to that east place and He's, they've been working with us full time. In the last 10 years, we grew our cow herd to where it is today. We have 275 fall pairs and 280 spring pairs. This is really nice to where we can use our bulls twice a year. We, in about Thanksgiving, we turn the bulls in with the fall pairs, and they run with them all winter. And then in the summer, we run them with our spring pairs. And we also keep back 70 heifers out of our fall calves every year and 70 in our, of our spring calves, too. It, this also varies quite a bit on how much feed we get to put up and how much grass we get to rent because it changes from year to year with the landlords either dying or selling land, and you never know when you might lose a pasture. One of our main goals in all this time was to get more centrally located on Naring Branch. And it, currently we rent about 5,000 acres within two to four miles of Mark's house. And it really works well. We can walk our cattle down the roads. We pair up so many to go in a certain pasture and just walk them down the road when we get ready to go to grass. And 
for feed for all these cattle, we have about 140 acres alfalfa and 300 acres of brome and 700 acres of native prairie hay. And then after we pick our corn in the fall, we plant rye on those corn stalks. And if we get some rains, that really makes a lot of good fall pasture. In October and November, we wean all these spring calves and give them all their shots. And then we background them till about February and when we sell the steers. And then we usually keep the heifers and pick out our replacements and then sell the rest of those. And I, I have a grinder mixer I've had for almost 30 years, and I grind and mix all the grain for these calves. And then for our fall cows, when we bring them off grass, we work all their baby calves. And then we put them out on pastures that we leave idle of our own to, for a while till the fields are ready. And then we put them down on our fields, and they get to graze the best fall pasture, the rye and corn stalks and alfalfa and brome and then we also put creep feeders out in about december for the calves and we keep those going till april and when spring comes we work all these big calves and leave them on their mothers and turn them back out to grass and we sell those calves right off the cow about the first of august and they really wean easy in august with the heifers we keep back they just wean so easy and we really like the fall calves seems to work the best uh, one of our challenges today though is all the invasive species of our pastures we have a lot of brush and cerisa and thistles and on a typical spring day i load up my 60 gallon sprayer on my polaris with brush spray and throw a lot of salt and mineral in there and i'll go check a different pasture every morning uh, check the cattle and put out the salt, and then I'll spray that 60-gallon out in that pasture on thistles first and then brush until I'm empty, and then I go back home. And uh, we also have a blaster mister that we use on our little Kubota tractor, and, and I'll usually go home and mix up a 100-gallon there and go around our home places and do that too then. One other topic I'd bring up is the beef fest that's going on this weekend at Emporia. Whoops. I thought that was a good idea to ride that cow till I got on it. <laughs> it was a real tame one till I sat down on it and then it took off. I've that was one of Mark's old 4-H calves that he, we kept back for a cow. And when I got done, I had the crotch split out of my pants <laughs> when I hit the ground. <laughs> This is our Beef Fest crew from last year. But we've had a lot of fun there, and, and we've entered cattle almost every year since it started. And we've met a lot of friends there at Emporia, and we really have to hand it to the committee and the people of Emporia that started the Beef Fest because it's sure been a nice deal. It really highlights the grass cattle industry. And we... We just have a lot of friends that we still see now every year and look forward to that. And the awards for that are tonight. We're, we're going after this afternoon. Uh, when the pandemic started, Mark and Hannah started selling some of their calves directly to consumers. The, there was quite a shortage of beef for s reasons, and, and that's worked pretty well for them. And they also sell some ground meat to the Lutheran school there in Alma, and they got a a grant i guess to buy local so that's helped them and mark and hannah their girls bren and ivy are going to school there and mark's also on the school board there at st john and uh, i also was on the board when mark went to school there hmm. yeah yeah i went to school there too for it's first through eighth grade and back to my stepson, Brad Holiday, he comes out in the fall and helps us put up electric fence and work cattle. And also he gets out there because he enjoys deer hunting so much. He and Mark really love to deer hunt and to fish. How are we doing for time? I guess a few other things I've done in the last 
30 years. I've been on the Mill Creek Township trustee for going on 30 years. And uh, I was on secretary for the Alma Co-op board for about 11 years. And the, we've been pretty proud of our little Alma Co-op. It's never merged with any of these big co-ops and we sell a lot of propane and we keep a an elevator going there in town so anybody needs feed they can call and order feed and they'll deliver it with their truck and they still do service and change fixed flat tires and we're really proud of the fact that they haven't we were afraid if they merged they'd move most of those services or shut them down so we wouldn't even have them there they just wanted our propane customers is why they were after us for a long time do you want to put them up i know another nice thing that's for us is the family cemeteries we we own the ground now where the our great 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 grandfather nearings and his wife and them are buried in this cemetery and then also the Swede Cemetery where my dad and grandfather and great-great-grandfathers are all laid to rest here. This is where Oliver and Minnie's grave is, and my dad's is right back over there. And you can see those two cedar trees there. That's where the Lutheran church used to stand there. And... I don't know, those hills were just full of people back in like 1920. There was 21,000 people in Wabonsee County, and today there's only 7,000. So there was 14,000 people, and most of them were out in the hills and farming. But, I, you know, in the 30s, most of them couldn't make it. And it Here's a picture of our crew to sell calves, the... The man on the side over here is Ronald Naring. He was the last of the man, male Narings to live out there on the place. And he still would come out and help us there. And then a friend of mine, Dwayne Swanwick, and Brad's buddy, Brad Heine, in the middle there. And the other guys are driving the semis. And This is this year's crew of cousin first cousin Greg and Julie and then the trucker and me and Mark and a cousin son and Wyatt and then Maddie which is who she's here today and we we sold uh, 295 calves that day we had four pot loads and here's a picture of the Langvarts at the Junction City sale barn and we've been working with them for five generations selling our cattle with those folks and they're Carl is about my age, and the auctioneer, they're my age, but their dad's gone, and, and they had a grandfather that started that sale barn, and my grandfather started selling cattle with them. So that's been a real nice relationship with those folks. I guess that's about all I have. Is there any questions? I know that's a lot to get over for six or seven generations in 45 minutes. Yes. On westward we go toward the last buffalo To the high plains of sturdy short grass Where the great southern herd still a sight beyond words As it covers the prairie so vast On the Plum Creek and Turkey Creek, Smoky Hill too our ponies and families walk 